So, what is political system? Political system are the institutions and the personnel for the policy making. Personnel means uh, the bureaucrats or uh, the officials for policy making. This includes chief executive, legislators, judges, and bureaucrats. In the systems version, they translate inputs into outputs. So, uh, political system consists of executive, legislature, judiciary, and they uh, actually the bureaucrats. They in they convert. They trans. They convert or they translate inputs into outputs. So, what is feedback? Feedback is the concept. Feedback indicates that the public policies may have a modifying effect on the environment, and the demands generated therein and may also have an effect upon the character of the political system. Policy outputs may generate new demands and new supports or withdrawal of the old supports for the system. Feedback plays an important role in generating suitable environment for future policy. So, uh, feedback indicates public policies may have a modifying effect on the environment. When government make a policy, it may have uh, create some kind of changes into a particular environment. So when the change occurs, uh, the affected people uh, may react. It may be a support. If a policy is made by government is in favor of a particular community, they will support the government. But a policy is against against a community, they will react against government as a protest. They may uh, withdraw their support in the next next time uh, when the election is held. So uh, policy uh, outputs may generate new demands and new supports or withdrawal of the old support for the system and feedback plays an important role uh, in generating suitable environment for the future policy. So uh, out, then we can go to the outputs. Outputs are authoritative value allocations of the political system and these allocations constitute public policy or policies. The system theory portrays public policy as an output of the political system. So outputs are the policies. Okay, so the understood that what is political system, what is feedback, what is outputs, what is inputs, what is demands and what is supports and what is an intra-societal environment and what is extra-societal environment. So systems theory, so systems theory have certain limitations. So before going to the limitations of the systems theory, here Thomas Dye has caught up some questions. So these questions are very significant because he says that systems theory is a very helpful uh, model for understanding public policy making. So system theory answers so many questions in the public policy analysis. Uh, that, that questions are uh, listed here. He says that system theory is very useful aid in understanding the policy making process and so he uh, listed some questions and system theory uh, answers these important questions. So questions are here, what are the significant dimensions of the environment that generate demands upon the political system. So here we can see that uh, environment has many dimensions it may be psychological it may be biological environment it may be an ecological environment so then what are the dimensions of the environment can be clear in the system theory what are the significant characteristics of the political system that enable it to transform demands into public policy and to preserve itself over time uh, and uh, system theory also answers the questions of how 
do environmental inputs affect the character of the political system how do characters characteristics of the political system affect the content of public policy how do environmental inputs affect the content of public policy how does public policy affect through feedback the environment and the character of the political system are very clear from the systems model but many thinkers also criticize the systems theory or systems model uh, the various limitations various uh, limitations put forward by the different thinkers are here so first limitations is that it is very too it is too simplistic theory it is argued that this input output model appears to be too simplistic uh, to serve as a useful aid to understanding the policy making process uh, this model is accused of employing the value laden techniques of welfare economics which are based on the maximization of clearly defined social welfare functions so um, something that says that uh, say that it is very simplistic very simple model and it, it cannot uh, able to um, explain very detailedly so it is a very simple too simple technique too simple model and another critic criticism says that it is very value laden techniques and it is um, is a part of value laden techniques of welfare economics so it is possible in welfare economics uh, which are based on the maximization of clearly defined social welfare function another shortcoming of the traditional input output model is that it ignores the fragmentary nature of the black box uh the missing ingredients in this system approach are the power personal personal means the bureaucrats and the institutions legislature executive and judiciary policy making so uh when the system theory we can see that there is a conversion process is there so the political system is is uh, what is what is the beauty of the political system it converts the inputs into outputs only it it has only a duty to convert what inputs into outputs and um but it it ignores what the the important elements of the political system uh power and bureaucrats bureaucrats and the legislatures executive judiciary so these are the important factors elements of the political system but it ignores these factors that is the another shortcoming of this this system theory and lindberg observes that in examine this we will not forget the political decision makers are strongly constrained by economic factors so economic factors is very important factor in making while we uh, while the government is making public policy there is a great impact from the economic factors but the system theory avoids economic factors it only considers biological factors ecological factors uh, social factors etc but it do not consider what economic factors so some sort of product the estonian model also ignores an important element of the policy process namely uh, the policy makers uh including the institutions i have also considerable potential in the influencing the environment which in within which they operate so policy makers have a very important role in policy making process but the system theory ignores the role of the policy makers and the traditional input model this model uh uh is um facilitative and value free rather than causative uh that means uh this is, in the system model uh, the system stands as completely a neutral structure just a, a structure it only uh, uh what is its its, it's only duty is to convert inputs into outputs and uh, 
uh, it only considers just a structure of, or the only a structure, only a political system, only a structure, only a box. So it, it, it and it says so it also lacks uh, a, a facilitating um, role of policy making. Policy making, um, policy makers. This is a very important role in policy making. But here the system model says that it's only a structure, only a, only a structure of a um, decision making system, only as a technical factor of the policy making. And another limitation is here. It is argued that both the political and bureaucrat elite fashion mass opinion more than masses shape their leadership views. Actually, what is happening here, the system theory says that demands and supports coming from the public, from the environment. And based on that demands and supports, every policy is made. So that is uh, not, that cannot be accepted by the criticizes they say that they say that what um, mass has a big, big, big role in shaping the opinion of the uh, sorry elite has a major role in shaping masses and mass and uh, so we can say that political and bureaucratic elite designs what the mass opinion public opinion and more than more than public opinion uh, in terms of public opinion on leadership views so leadership is uh, leadership has a major influence on public opinion and uh, so we can say that uh, the concept of with inputs as opposed to to inputs has been created to illustrate this point. The policy changes may uh, may be attributed more to the political administrative elites, redefinition of their own views, than as the product of the demands and support from the environment. Quite often, policy initiation does emerge from the bureaucracy. Under certain situations, the bureaucracy becomes a powerful institution in formulating and legit legitimizing policy. So here, it is very clear that Bureaucracy has a very major influential role in creating public policy and sometimes they become a very powerful institution in formulating and legitimizing policy. And in Western democracies, the bureaucracy's role, is, role in the shaping of policy direction is largely technical and fairly minimal. Uh, the policy direction remains still largely in the traditional domain of the political elite. On the other hand, in a developing country like India, where the state's objectives are not fully articulated and clear, the bureaucracy easily capitalizes on the process of policy selection out of alternative policy strategies. It does participate in the formulation of public policy in addition to performing purely technical tasks. So, a uh, country like India, bureaucrats is very uh, crucially interfering in the process of policy uh, policy making than the political leadership. So some kind of uh, policies are coming out of the great effect from the part of bureaucrats, the civil servants. They are actually making uh, the laws, the structure of the structure of every law. So we can say that the participation of bureaucrats is very crucial in a country like developing country like India. So you can say that bureaucracy's effect, bureaucracy's control over policy making is very uh, wide, very major factor in uh, countries like India. Finally, the extent to which the environment, both internal and external, is said to have an influence on the policy making process is influenced by the values and ideologies held by the decision makers in the system. It suggests that policy making involves not only the policy content but also the policy makers' perceptions and values. The values held by the policy makers are fundamentally assumed to be crucial in understanding the policy alternatives that are made. So, actually, uh, who is crucial in policy making? 
a bureaucrat's role is very crucial in policy making so the values which is uh, the values which ha, uh, which are coming from the bureaucrats the bureaucrats perceptions their values is very important in uh, in the process of making of policies so uh, the values held by the policy makers are fundamentally assumed to be crucial in understanding the policy alternatives that are made so that is a condition actually in the policy making process where the system theory is uh uses what these kind of uh, influences of legit uh, uh bureaucrats or the uh, officials or the power or the elite elite role are missing in the systems model theory by the is it are the major criticism by the thinkers okay this would be called system theory or the system model for the public policy analysis okay thank you